Thank you, Cahirlog. I'm very pleased to have the opportunity to appear before Shannon today to contribute to the debate on Budget 2023, which the Minister for Finance and the Minister for Public Expenditure and Reform presented to the Laren this afternoon. Um, as with the budgets for the past few years, Budget 2023 is being framed against a difficult and uncertain economic environment, while we had all hoped that this year we would see us building on the recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic, Russia's invasion of Ukraine has changed the domestic and the international landscape. The war, um, which first and foremost has had a devastating humanitarian cost, has also created substantial economic costs and, and elevated uncertainty. This presents a significant challenge as we set out for Budget 2023. Inflation has hit its highest level in decades. The latest projections are for it to average 8.5% this year and around 7% next year. This is a familiar picture across international economies. The impact of the war is also weighing on economic growth. Higher inflation will reduce purchasing power and consumer spending, with rising interest rates and uncertainty dampening investment. While Ireland recorded strong growth in the first half of the year, we are now revising downwards our forecasts. Modified domestic demand, the preferred measure of domestic activity, is projected at one and a quarter percent next year. This is having a very real effect on our day-to-day -day lives. It is directly impacting businesses and households' incomes and living standard. It is for this reason the government has today presented a cost of living budget focused on helping our citizens in meeting these challenges and putting money back into their pockets. Despite the difficulty and deeply uncertain economic environment, we should recall the resilience of our economy and society in responding to crises, not least the COVID-19 pandemic. Government implied the full range of fiscal resources that we had carefully built up over many years to successfully protect households and businesses, insulating our economy from long-term damage while supporting our healthcare and frontline workers. This approach helped to deliver a remarkable labour market recovery with employment in the second quarter of this year reaching 2.5 million people, the highest level on record, and as of August, the unemployment rate has fallen to 4.3%. In tandem with this, the public finances have bounced back strongly. This reflects the responsible approach we have taken in managing our response to recent economic shocks. The government must find the correct balance which does not jeopardise fiscal sustainability. While the recovery in the public finances is broadly based, we must recognise a portion of this surge in tax revenue is due to windfall corporation tax receipts. The Department of Finance and many other commentators have warned about the risks this could present, particularly if the situation were to change suddenly and significantly in the future. In light of this vulnerability, the National Reserve Fund will be replenished with some of these revenues, with two billion directed into the fund this year and a further four billion transferred there next year. It is also important to remember that in the pandemic, government had already responded quickly and decisively to support households and businesses with rising cost of living pressures, particularly the most vulnerable. Not only did we take the decision to bring forward Budget 2023 by two weeks to provide a more timely response, we have also announced cost of living packages amounting to just under $2.5 billion over the course of the year and amended our fiscal strategy for 2023, doubling the size of the tax package and increasing public expenditure. <clears throat> While strong fiscal response in Budget 2023 is warranted, given the uncertain situation and the direction of monetary policy, we must carefully balance the provision of supports while not adding to demand pressures, ensuring a sustainability of public finances and keeping resources available to respond to tomorrow's challenges. Today, Ministers Donoghue and McGrath announced a package of supports amounting to some €11 billion, Euro, with a further €300 million in public service support measures funded from the Contingency Reserve Fund. Given the urgency of the challenges which we face, €4.1 billion of this package will be spent this year. In terms of taxation, the current excise reduction of 21% per litre in respect of petrol, 16 cent per litre in respect of diesel and 5.4% in respect of marked gas oil is being extended until the 28th of February 2023. This extension is also being applied to the 9% VAT rate for electricity and gas. 
In addition, the budget includes an income tax package which amounts to over €1 billion, Euro, with the standard rate cut-off point increasing to €40,000 and the main tax credit, personal tax credit, employee and earned income tax credit rising by €75 Euro each. The home care tax credit is also being increased by €100 Euro to support stay-at-home parents. The 2% USC ban ceiling is also increasing and the reduced rate of USC for those who have a medical card can, and earn less than €60,000 per annum is being extended for a further year. Further consideration will be given to the introduction of a third rate of income tax um, with the report to be published prior to next year's summer economic statement. Alongside the cost of living crisis, housing remains a key focus of this government. The unprecedented levels of investment in housing is starting to yield results, with some 25,000 new homes built in the last year, the highest level in a decade. However, the government is committed to doing more. Consideration will be given to the recommendation from the independent review of the Help to Buy scheme in future budgets. In the interim, the scheme will continue until the end of 2024 at the current rates. A vacant home tax has been introduced to increase the supply of homes for rent or purchase to meet demand. This tax will be charged at a rate equal to three times the property's existing basic lower property tax rate. In terms of rental market, the government is also introducing a new rent tax credit to support tenants, which will be valued at €500 Euro per annum and will benefit 400,000 people. This is available this year and next year as well. In the area of climate action, the government remains committed to protecting the environment, reducing emissions and supporting newer, cleaner technology. Carbon taxation is necessary to provide the additional funding for vital climate measures such as retrofitting. As such, the rate per tonne of carbon dioxide emitted uh, for petrol and diesel will increase by €7.50 to €48.50 from the 12th of October. However, given the current cost of living pressures, this will be fully offset, offset with a reduction to zero of the National Oil Reserve's agency level. The levels, in terms of agriculture, the number of important reliefs, such as the farm consolidation, stamp duty relief, are being extended to support young farmers and the farming sector more generally. The government has also announced more specific measures to support businesses and enterprise. This includes amendments to the small benefit scheme, exemption scheme and reductions in the excise fees for special exemption applications in order to provide support for the nighttime economy. More broadly, the government is reducing, introducing a temporary business energy support scheme to assist firms with the rising cost of energy during the winter months. This scheme will provide eligible businesses with up to 40% of the increased cost in their energy bills. In terms of revenue-raising measures, it is not appropriate for energy companies to earn excessive profits from the current volatile conditions. The EU is undertaking work to capture the windfall energy gains of these firms. Ireland aims to participate in the EU-wide response, though if this is not feasible, the government will propose its own measures. To support public health objectives, excise duty on a pack of 20 cigarettes is being increased by 50 cents, with a pro rata increase on other tobacco products. Also, a zero VAT rate will be applied to defibrillators from the 1st of January 2023, along with a number of other VAT changes. On longer term matters, the Department will develop a roadmap for personal taxation reform and commence reviews of other regimes on the Commission of Taxation and Welfare's recommendation over the coming months. In conclusion, it is clear that effective government action has already put Ireland back on the road to recovery from the pandemic, with our employment levels and public finances in good health. This has put us in a strong position to confront the challenges we face today. Our decisive response to date has helped to mitigate the impacts of inflationary pressures on vulnerable households and businesses. Today's cost of living budget continues to provide a much needed um, level of support over the final months of this year and into next year. Given the elevated uncertainty we are facing, we will continue to manage the public finances effectively in order to have the resources available to best respond to future challenges and to support people into the future. Thank you.